Welcome to Next Level Greatness, the podcast. Around here, we'll be talking about all things expansion, going from good to great and from great to greatness. I'm your host, Barbie Collab. Get ready for your next level. Let's do this. Welcome to Next Level Greatness, the podcast. You are not going to believe this. Today's podcast is on trusting the timing, divine timing, if you believe that there's such a thing. And really, we're going to get into the question that I hear all the time, which is also, it's not only a question, it's kind of a complaint. And we're going to dive deep into it today. How come my manifestation is not happening fast enough? Or why isn't my manifestation happening fast enough? The other day I had my friend send me a text message. She took my course, Money Magnet, and she said, you know, Barb, I'm having these little manifestations, but they're not big ones. And I said, well, that's the problem. The problem is that you're not appreciating and recognizing the manifestations that are coming in. And so why should the universe send you bigger manifestations? But back to the thing that you are not going to believe. So I just pulled a card from, her name is Rebecca Campbell, the Starseed Oracle. And it's a deck of cards. And I personally love these cards. And I thought about, am I going to share this with you guys? Are you guys going to think that I'm woo-woo? And then I realized I need to give that up. Like, you are going to love me for who I am, what I am, and all the things that I love or don't love. Like, you, you take it or leave it, right? It's okay if you judge me. And my people are usually into these cards. And they're just like, I don't know if they're fortune cards, oracle cards, or whatever. But anyway, I pulled a card today, just five minutes ago, right before we started this podcast. And the card that I pulled says, trust the timing, trust the wave you came in on. Time is not running out. And I'm like, holy moly universe, how is it possible that this card came up. So that is the topic of today's podcast. Why isn't my manifestation happening fast enough? It's taking too long, not seeing the results. I will totally get vulnerable here. So we just launched Money Magnet. This was the third edition. And by the way, well, at the time of this recording, I still have a few more days of promotion. So I did a photo shoot in case you haven't seen the branding for that. Go check out either my Facebook or my Instagram. And I had this beautiful dress and the marketing or the branding has been so amazing. I chatted with a friend yesterday and she said, I don't know how you come up with like all these different ideas and conversations about money. My point is that I really poured my heart and soul into the third edition of Money Magnet. And as of today, so again, by the time you listen to this podcast, it may be more. I had six students who had said yes. And my logical brain was saying, how is that possible? The first round of Money Magnet I had 18 students enroll, and I think the second round, it was 20 students. And so we tend to apply a very mathematical kind of rash, yeah, mathematical or very logical formula to our actions, to the things that we do. And so if I were existing, which I was existing in that universe when I was having these thoughts, and I was existing in the old paradigm of thinking that things are supposed to happen in a certain order, well, they didn't. And so does this mean that I failed? And yet, the answer is obviously no, no, I haven't failed. This is going to be, whether it's six students, eight students, or 10 students, an amazing experience. But 
I'm going to confess to you that I started my launch and I was like, okay, my intention for this launch is to really be chill rocket ship and just to really, really remain calm and zen no matter what the outcome. Because one of the things that I teach and one of the principles that I live by is that I'm holding a, a larger context. I have an actual vision of what I'm here to do on this earth. And so the results that I produce next week or that are produced next week or the week after that or the month after that, they could be whatever they are because I know where I'm headed to ultimately. And yet, even though I know that, I felt myself wobble. I felt myself be like, oh my God, I can't believe that this is not happening the way that I want it to be. And I thought, I surely thought that because it's the third edition of Money Magnet, that I would have a like double, you know, or triple or quadruple. And the fact is that when it comes to manifestation, you can exponentially grow. You can grow exponentially, but you can also not. We tend to think of manifestation as something, as a highlight reel, as something that when it happens, it happens and it happens fast, right? Let's say one year you make $40,000 and then the next year you grow exponentially and you make $500,000 and you're like, oh, my business grew exponentially and I manifested this. But what you don't hear about is when things are happening and there's silence, it doesn't mean that silence doesn't mean that the magic is not happening. And so I really had to coach myself through this experience. And I'm fine. It took me several days where I felt myself getting a little bit wobbly. I felt myself getting a little bit um kind of anxious was the word, but there's like a little sense of inner disappointment of like, oh, I thought things were supposed to go differently. And I coached myself through it. I'm going to tell you a few things that, that happened. And I was like, okay, that's right. There's a bigger context. There's a bigger vision. I absolutely love my photo shoot. I love the way the marketing is in terms of the branding, right? The way that the graphics looked. I hired a graphics designer. She's amazing. I have the most amazing testimonials. I had a whole shebang. I feel really great about the way that I have talked about Money Magnet and I felt great about the way that I showed up on Instagram stories. So what am I saying to you right now? I truly did my best. And at the same time, I wanted the results to come faster. I wanted more. I wanted more. I wanted more, which is totally normal. And I have to admit to you that at this very second, saying all of this, I feel really vulnerable and I feel just naked, like that I'm being seen. But why am I sharing this with you? I'm sharing, and I'm now fine. If you can feel the switch in my voice, I'm fine now because it's so important for you to hear and see people that you see as successful going through the struggles. I am a seven-figure earner. I have been in business for 15 plus years, and yet I'm feeling myself wobble or I felt myself wobble and I had to coach myself and lead myself to get myself back into a place of like, oh no, girl, remember the larger vision. This is not where it ends. And so when it happens to you with whatever your desire is, you're not going to think that you're abnormal. So I took a step back and everything falls into your lap in divine time. And when you're looking for the signs, the signs appear because you're looking for them and you're open to receiving them. And the universe is forever sending you signs. So the first thing is one of my mentors recommended the book, The Alchemist, which is a book about a journey that a young boy takes. He has a big vision and he realizes, I'm going to, it's spoiler alert, but it's okay because it's, you really do have to read the book yourself. He realizes at the end that 
It's the journey itself that counts. And it sounds so cliche, right? Because we know that it's the journey itself that counts. And there are so many other truly, truly golden nuggets. He meets a man called the alchemist that is able to turn anything into gold. And this is what we're doing with our lives. It's turning everything into gold. So number one, reading that book reminded me that there is a larger vision because this, the boy in, oh my gosh, I forgot his name right now, but the boy in the book, he has a vision and he dares to go and pursue this vision. But he meets this shopkeeper that has this dream of pursuing something, but doesn't dare to leave his shop. And so do I dare to dream? Do you dare to live out your vision? Or are you going to be that person like the shopkeeper who wants to visit the pyramids in Egypt, but doesn't dare? I don't want to be that person. And I know that I can't fail because I know two things. I know that I'm in it for the long game. So if I don't get the exact results that I want now, I was going to say in March or April, but it really doesn't matter when it is, then that's fine. The result that I desire, if it's a money result, it's going to happen eventually. And I'm not in a rush. It's just that it's cool. It's really cool when things happen and the way that you happen, right? Like it's so cool to celebrate like, oh my gosh, I went from 50K to 500K in one year or two years. Like that sounds so awesome and it's great to celebrate. But if we go back to the alchemist and we're forgetting the joy of the journey, then we've missed our lives. And that is not who I want to be. And so reading this book and several other things that happened brought me back to savoring life itself. And it has been, ooh, I just said goosebumps, and it's been so beautiful because I realized that I was so caught up in my masculine energy of my doing, promoting, and talking, and all this stuff. And it's like, wait a second, can I slow down just a little bit? Actually, a lot. And so I got off social media. It was a whole weekend. It was like a whole event for me. And I said, can I enjoy this present moment? I'm not talking about going to do something, going on a walk. No, it's can I just enjoy this present moment right now? And the whole weekend I came back into myself and I enjoyed my husband more and I enjoyed my doggies more. Like it's the present moment that is so beautiful and rich. And this is the only moment that we have is the present. And if you're interested in the present moment, I highly recommend Eckhart Tolle. But then I also thought, so I came back to the present moment, but then I also came back to just this present experience of me having, whether it's six students in my class, in my program, or eight students or 10 students. And again, you might be listening to this podcast right now. We might have 10 students. We might have 12 students. We might have 15 students. We might only have the six. But what is it that I'm after? And after impact, it has always been the impact. And so this is where I feel vulnerable because it's so easy for us to get off track. It's so easy for us to be results driven. But is that what I want? I've had that. Remember, if you have been following me for any amount of time, my story involves me making the most that I had ever made and feeling like there was something missing because I got lost in the pursuit of, I don't know, the numbers and I had lost connection with people. And so I came back to myself. And now I've gotten so much better at this process of coming back to myself, right? Because I honestly believe that we're all like an airplane that is constantly off course and we constantly have to course correct. Like, I don't know anybody that is perfect and that some people may seem perfect, but they're not perfect. They always are course correcting. And so I course corrected and I came back to like, okay, whether it's six or seven or eight or 10 or 12 or 15 people, I have an opportunity to make a deep impact in their lives 
And I have an opportunity to be transformed myself by this experience because every single time that I teach, every single time that I do an episode, and if you remember also, I started this episode or this podcast with very few listeners and eventually we got to 10,000 listeners and eventually it'll be 100,000 listeners. And sometimes it has felt and it does sometimes feel like, wait, do I actually have an audience? Am I talking to myself? Because people don't normally message me to tell me how much they love the podcast. It has been happening more and more, which I so appreciate. And I so appreciate when you do leave podcast reviews because they really do matter. And they it's not that they validate me. I was going to say validate me, but we all want to know that's it. We all want to know that we're having an impact. And yes, a bird is going to sing regardless of whether someone can hear the bird singing. But if I'm a bird and I'm singing, I would love to know that there's an ear that is appreciating my beautiful song. I hope you love that metaphor. So yeah, it's been such a rich experience for me. And I hope that you're able to take away some golden nuggets from my words. So as I read The Alchemist, I started looking at some stuff online on the author Paolo Coelho. And I found out that his book didn't do well at first. He said that he wrote the book in just like three weeks, that it, it was basically written inside of his soul. And so it took him basically no time to write, but it didn't do well. And it became, with time, it became a bestseller. And it was on the New York Times bestseller list, I think for like 20, I don't know, it was 24 weeks or 24 months, but it doesn't matter. The point is that this book, has sold millions of copies, but it didn't do well in the beginning. So that was a good reminder for me that we can't be attached to the early results or things that we want certain things to go a certain way and, and they don't. And that doesn't mean success or failure. It means failure if you stop. And unfortunately, in my 15 years plus of doing network marketing, I see so many people quit when I know that they haven't truly, truly given the business a chance. And that is not me. I'm not doing that. So for me, it was never an option to quit, whether it was my network marketing business or this coaching business that I have. It's not an option because I see the big vision. So it's one thing to wobble, but I may have periods, like it might be a weekend or a week or whatever where I wobble, it could be my confidence or my vision, but then I come right back. But it's never a question of quitting. And then I also saw, uh, it was like, I don't know, but yeah, it was a documentary on Freddie Mercury, the Queen, the whole band and how Freddie Mercury became Freddie Mercury. And before the success that we know as Freddie Mercury, before he became the man, the rock star, they were very much, as a band, they were very much in the limelight. You know, people thought he was weird, and he was. He was eccentric, but that's what made him him. And one of the things that resonated from what I heard was that he always knew that he was a rock star. He always knew that they were destined for greatness. But it took them years and years before they became, quote unquote, an overnight success. And then I love J-Lo. So I was thinking of J-Lo and I was like, you know what? She's an icon. And I remember, I think it was what, early 90s, so late 80s, early 90s, when she was on that show as a backup dancer in Living Color. And so we tend to forget people's origins because on social media, we're so enamored by the overnight success. We're so enamored by the highlight reels. We're so in love with these like huge quantum leap transformations. And I think as someone who is in business, I mean, I love to celebrate big leaps as well, right? Because why? Because they're amazing. Like I want to be able to say, oh, I went from 50,000 to 500,000, right? That is something to celebrate. But you know what? Going from zero to $10,000, for example, is freaking awesome too, because that's the experience that you had 
in building and doing the things that you needed to do to get to the 10,000 or going from zero to 5,000 or zero to 15,000. It just doesn't matter zero to 100,000. It's can we enjoy the journey? So I don't know what dream you have planted in your heart, but I know that you have big dreams. And the struggle, the moments of wobble, they are part of the journey. That's the message that I want you to hear. And I am being vulnerable, sharing my own wobble, which is like current or recent. You know, this is last week, the week before. But I want you to see what it really looks like. I feel like I'm going to cry. I really want you to see what it looks like to have a business. So whatever that dream is, keep the larger context in mind. Remember your vision. Read The Alchemist. Number two, remember to be present. Ask yourself, how can I come back to the present? We're often so in the future thinking about what it is that we want, but life is happening right now. And I feel like I'm enjoying my life so much more that it literally brings me to tears, that I was missing out my, on my life with my little dogs right now, I see one is at my on my at my feet. Like that is a precious moment. And our life, as much craziness as there might be in your life, or as much chaos or whatever it is, there's something very beautiful about this very very present moment. And you might be listening to this podcast, or you're walking your dogs, or cleaning. Like just stop, stop for a minute, and just take in this beautiful moment that you have, and then. Finally, trust and believe you're in this for the long game. You're in this for the long game. I hope that you have enjoyed this very raw, very real episode of my podcast. And I would love to connect with you over on Instagram. I'm at barbie.caleb. We've got my Magnetic Portal community. And if you still want to jump into Money Magnet, you are definitely welcome to. But thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being exactly who you are. I will see you next time. If you loved this episode and if you're loving my podcast, I would love for you to leave a review. They really do make a difference in spreading the word and having more people be impacted. Also, I'd love for you to join me in my Facebook community called The Magnetic Portal. You can find the link in the show notes. I'll see you next time.